Hey folks, Rick here. Welcome to my channel. All right, well, today it's gonna be about swapping out this clutch basket and expecting our clutch. So if you hadn't hit that subscribe, please do. I uh, really appreciate it, but let's go ahead and get this up on the table and we'll take a look at it. Okay, so I've already got the clutch out. This is off my KX450. Uh, a lot of the 450s are the same. I didn't really um, film taking it off. I was doing a bunch of other stuff, but getting the clutch out and expecting it is unbelievably e easy on these um, KXs or most any 450s, you simply just pull off this clutch inspection cover. It just pulls off, lean your bike over first if you want, that'll keep the oil from coming out. Pull off this cover and it explodes your clutch. Very easy, you'll zip off your springs, they come off, pull off your pressure plate here, and that's really about the extent of it. From that point here, you pull off you can reach in and pull out your clutch pack. Now when you pull out your clutch pack here, you want to be careful and you, you, a lot of times you can't get the whole thing out at once. You pull them off one thing at a time. But it's important there, some of these things are in a certain direction or a certain order. Not all these clutch friction discs or plates are the same, depending on your model. They may be, they may be not. On this one right here, the very first and last disc is supposedly different than the middle disc. Now it's funny, you read the manual, it says you can't tell the difference between any of them, but there two of them are different. So it's important here to always keep them in order. The same thing here with the plates. Now on this bike here, all the plates are the same, but oftentimes there's a certain orientation. So a lot of times they'll have a flat, you know, they're stamped, so there's a flat and a sharp edge you want. If it doesn't say one way or the other, you want to make sure you got all the flats facing out or all the flats facing in so everything's the same there. But pull them out one at a time, set them down. You'll just pull them out and set them down here on the table or wherever you're at to keep them in order. And then do your inspections. So for inspections here, you know, looking at this thing, you want to see if they're burnt, cracks, any damage to them. And then you want to check your manual and you're going to take, uh, you know, like a set of calipers and measure them there. They'll give you the, uh, the, the measurements there to see if they're wore out or not. But do a good inspection here. If any of these things are bad, you want to replace all of them, including new uh, plates here. Uh, so you want to check these plates here to see if they've been hot uh, or anything like that. This one here is a little discolored looking. But you want to just set them down on something flat. They'll tell you how to inspect them. This one here says check for warpage. Uh, again, if there's anything bad with them, you want to replace the whole clutch pack. So that's how you inspect these things here. Just follow your manual. You can generally tell when they're good or bad. You want to check your pressure plate. Check this surface here. It should be nice and flat. Should be no grooves in it. This one's here in good shape. You also want to check, check your, um, your hub. And this here is where my problem started here. So let me uh, see if I can get you, see, see this here real quick. There we go. So if you look here, you can see those waves in there. You can kind of see them on there. That is where these friction discs here, these drive plates have been on here and causing wear. So when it's like this, these things don't fit tight anymore. They can bind. Uh, and it's tough to get this thing going on here. So they, they can bind when they come in and out, they get on those ridges, it could cause your clutch to bind, it can cause them much work, but it also creates slop because those things are where it allows this plate to kind of move like this more. That could, uh, you know, it's gonna further wear out this thing faster, could cause some, uh, you know, more damage. But this here is shot when you got those grooves on it. The next thing here is the clutch basket. And this is what we're looking at today. If you look at it here, and I'm sorry about the noise and I'm yelling there, I've got the heater on in the garage, but it's just freezing. 
but you can see these grooves here as well. So when you get those grooves, it's the same thing. Your clutch discs are right in here. Um, when they're riding in those grooves on there, it could get bind, it could cause them to go this way. Uh, again, it creates slop to where it doesn't fit properly. That's gonna cause more damage. It could cause these things to break on you. So when you get something like this, they're basically wore out and you need to replace them. Now, you'll probably find videos out there, people show you how to repair them. I do not recommend it. Uh, again, there's tolerances between your clutch pack, your hub, and your uh, basket here. And when they're like this, the tolerances are no longer. So time to replace it. The problem here with replacing these clutch baskets, depending on the, uh, the replacement, and if you've already started and got your uh, bike down to this pipe and you got your, um, your uh, clutch basket in, you probably already know and found a problem. And so what that problem is here, if I open this one up here, and I stick this one down here, you'll notice the difference right away. One, this does not have any gears on it. And so as much money as you spend for one of these uh, clutch baskets, why they don't come complete, I don't know. But this is where the problem lies here. If I look at this here, I got this outer gear and this inner gear, and this one has nothing. So how do I get this thing from here to here? And that's what we're gonna show you how to do today, uh, swapping this thing out. So to start with here, there's a couple of things here um, that we got. We've got two different gears. It depends on the model of your bike. Sometimes this gear and this gear is attached. This one here is actually separate, so we gotta go through two separate processes on this one. But to get this big gear off, which is predominantly the most, where, where most um, clutch baskets gotta get, we have to remove these rivets. You can see there's no bolts or no clips. This thing's actually riveted on here. And so like any rivet here, we basically got to take a center punch, punch these out, uh, and, and drill them out. Or another method you could do is take a grinder and grind them down. You just want to make sure whatever method you do, you don't hit this gear. You just want to get rid of these heads. So it's winter time. I've got stuff all over my garage. I'm kind of crammed into the corner here because I've got the vehicles in. So I don't want a bunch of sparks flying around if I can help it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the drilling uh, of this thing. Now, for some reason on this thing, these have already got little punch marks on them, like center punches, which is kind of nice, but unfortunately, not all of them are directly in the center. So I think we'll just have, I don't think we got any choice but to use those ones. But uh, let me get set up here with the stuff here to drill these out and uh, we'll get going on this project of removing this gear and getting it set up on this new one. And then we'll get this little gear and put it in here as well. So let me get set up. Okay, folks. So the first thing you wanna do here again is you wanna center punch each one of your rivets. Now this one's already got punch marks on it. So I'm gonna have to just skip that step, which is kinda nice. We wanna take a small pilot bit um, we're gonna drill some pilot holes. When you drill these holes, they don't gotta be very deep. They just gotta be a little deeper than the head. So these heads are probably not even a 16th of an inch. So I'll probably go down an eighth of an inch. Once we get our pilots done, we wanna get another drill bit. Kind of find one that's about the same size as the outside diameter of this, of this little uh, head here to, to take it off. And that's what we use. So I've got this drill press here. I'm gonna use that. You can go ahead and use just a hand drill just the same, but I've already got this, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, hook this up. Okay, I had to get the darn thing plugged in here. Let's go ahead and turn her on. This thing's older than heck.
that's really good. Hard to see there, but I just got a little hole. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of these and we'll swap out the bits. Okay, so I've got all the holes drilled here. Now I'm gonna go back and finish with my bigger bit. Hopefully these will just pop right off. So let me get re reset up here. Okay, I'm set up here. My bit's a little bit long, so I had to use something a little homemade here. But I'm gonna go ahead and drill these out and we'll see what we can do. Hopefully I ain't gotta adjust my speed. So I've got the top drilled off here. So we'll see how that goes. Might need to go a little deeper, but we'll start from there. And uh, yeah, let's get the rest of them done. Folks, had a little video mishap. So once I got all these uh, drilled out here, uh, and whether you drill them or grind them, once you get to that point, you're going to need to take a punch and simply just punch these out and drive the um, little rivets down uh, a little bit. And that'll break them loose from this uh, plate here. So you drive them in, it'll break them loose. And you probably need to stick a little screwdriver under here, pry around. Eventually, this will pop right off, and you're good to go from there. Your gear, pry your gear off, it'll come off. You got those little rubber things on here. Um, anyway, your gear will pop off. That piece is done. The next thing on this hub here, again, um, I've already got it done, unfortunately. I'm doing this after the fact. I've edited my video, and I got a big uh, bad spot in my video. But the next piece here is I had to move is this gear. This gear is separate from the big gear. And so it's pressed in here. And so you either got to do like an arbor press, which I wish I would have bought at the beginning of the year because I've done a whole load of bearings. Unfortunately, I'm done, uh, and so I don't want to buy one. So our next step is really, I was thinking about using a vise, uh, but the, it's too big this way for me. So basically what we got to do uh, from the inside of this thing here is we want to punch it out. Uh, and so basically here, uh, if you look here on the inside of this one here, you can kind of see it but um, you just basically want to get something here uh, smaller than the inside of this here but larger than your bearing uh, like a socket stick it on top and simply stick something underneath the bottom here and drive it out now I end up using my I'll stick it up here on on the, the vice here you'll see in a minute I do got that on video but that's what we're gonna do here so that's next so let me go ahead and get it teed up. I'll get my socket and uh, we'll get set up here and get this out. Okay, so I've got my uh, hub here or my clutch basket resting on top of my uh, bench vise. I've got this socket here that's the right size. I got my hammer. So what I'm gonna do now here is spend some time with my heat gun now I'm going to heat this thing up and give it a good chance here to expand. Hopefully this thing will just pop right out. So let's get started.
I'm gonna flip this over here real quick. That's really hot. I'm gonna try to get the underside here. This big thick spot here is where it's pressed in at, so I'm gonna do a little bit on that side. Again, there's, there's a bearing inside here, so we wanna be very careful. Voila, whoo, that's hot. Whew. So there's our, our uh, gear all pressed out. So from here, now it's time to transfer everything over to here. So this one here has uh, a new clutch plate here, whatever you call that thing. Just take it off. It's got us a little just held on here by this piece of plastic. But yeah, so what we need to do now is, is get that gear pressed back in here. And so what we've got to do now is, is a normal bearing is we got to heat this up. And so I'm going to go stick this in the oven. Uh, the directions is actually on this one actually says 200 degrees for uh, an actual oven temperature. So I'm going to stick this in here at 200, getting it good warmed up. Uh, I got to let this gear here cool down a little bit. And then I need to heat, uh, not heat this one. I need to stick this one in the freezer to where it gets uh, nice and cold. So now that it's hot, I got to let it sit there. Uh, I'm going to apply, once it gets done and it gets nice and cold, I'm going to apply a little bit of oil right here on these um, these uh, uh, little cogs here that go into the basket just so they don't hang up. And then hopefully this thing is just going to, um, you know, drop right in there. So that's the, that's the theory there. So with that, let me go ahead and get this thing cooking, get this one getting freezing, and then we'll come back and finish this thing up. All right, folks, before I start the process here, we're going we're gonna to use a, a, a clutch basket kit here from Pro-X. It's a pretty nice set. Uh, here's a clutch basket here. Uh, you know, it's, it's definitely looking a lot better than the new ones. Uh, it's hard anodized, so this thing should last uh, a long time, a lot better. Again, it does come with, uh, stuck on here, the new plate to hold our uh, gear on. It does come here with all the new uh, shock absorbers here that go in between. And of course it comes with here all new uh, bolts that are already Loctited. It does require red Loctite. And it actually comes with a little Torx bit here to put these in. So it comes with a tool and everything to go ahead and put them in with. So um, it's, it's a nice kit. It's a nice basket. Um, and so, yeah, that's what we're going to use. I'm going to go get this stuck in the oven here, and we'll get that gear on and uh, get, this, uh, get the large gear on the back and the small, and this project will be done. Get, uh, get some more parts in. We'll get this installed in the bike and hopefully uh, be out riding it in a month. Okay, folks, real quick, I just got this out of the oven. I'm going to stick that there. I've got my gear here nice and cold. We're going to stick this in here. Hope it's just going to drop right in. We're going to take our little ratchet there, or socket, and I'm going to tap on this. Get it to go in the rest of the way. A little bit farther here. And I think I just about got it there. Feels pretty good. Alrighty. 
Now let that sit there and cool and we will be good and we'll put the rest of it together. Okay folks, sure got myself some more room. So I got this in, uh, it didn't slip right in, but it went in fairly easy. I stuck a little something here, I happen to have this big socket, I stuck something flat underneath here uh, just to give it some support when I was tapping it in. But it's all in good shape. So now it's time here to go ahead and assemble the rest of this. So we want to start with here is get our little rubber isolators. Go ahead and put those on. Again, if your clutch basket doesn't come with these, you want to go ahead and order a set. There's no sense getting this far and sticking your old ones back in there. It just doesn't make any sense. So we'll go ahead and uh, get all these in. Kind of let it go on one certain way. Okay. I'm going to take our gear that we kept in the right orientation. You always want to pay attention how you take stuff off. We're going to slide this on over top of those, like so, hopefully, like so. That's the plan, is to do it like so. I think my clutch basket, my clutch, uh, my clutch basket is probably still just a tad bit warm. It's probably expanded a little bit. Let's see if I can just tap this on here a little bit. Almost on there. All right. So I got that gear on. Go ahead and just clean this thing up. All right. We want to take our new plate here. Go ahead and stick that on over the top and then we want to go ahead and get our little bolts again these ones thank it thankfully are already got the loctite on them we'll go ahead and put these on here real quick Okay, now we're going to tighten these things up. Um, again, read your instructions here that come with yours for to see how much they need to be torqued on your particular model here. But you want to run them down, and like all this stuff here, you want to do in a star pattern. So just snug them up barely, just kind of go down even uh, on a crisscross pattern. Now I'm going to run these down a little bit just to get them farther, and then we'll go ahead and torque these things.
So I didn't miss any of those. So they're all pretty tight. That's it. I have now got a brand new clutch hub. Uh, everything's over. So again, this thing should be, uh, you know, a lot nicer, a lot stronger, provide a lot longer service here. Again, it's real hard anodized. But that's it. It's not a big deal. For as much money as these hutch clubs, ugh, these clutch baskets here cost, it'd be nice if they came with all this stuff fully assembled. You could just pull them out. None of us got the time or the tools a lot of times to do this stuff, so you kind of get in panic mode. But at the end of the day, it's not that impossible uh, to really do. Uh, again, just some basic tools on this one here. You could use a grinder or a drill to drill out your rivets. At this point, the next time I ever have to do this, if I ever have to, you know, you can just unbolt this thing now. So now it's not so bad. But again, you got to expect it when you're working on stuff there. Uh, you know, they like to do a lot of this stuff where you take it back to the dealer. But it's really simple to do. Again, a little bit of, a little bit of heat, uh, some hammers, some punch, some drill bits. Got it out, got the new one in, and it's ready to go. So this will give me uh, a lot uh, longer life. So when I get the rest of the parts in, I'm going to go ahead and do the clutch. I do have a brand new clutch basket. Not a, a clutch hub to put in here, and I've got a full uh, clutch pack here from Pro X as well. I'm going to stall in there when I get ready to do that. But anyway, that's it. Uh, again, if you've got grooves on there, don't try to file those things out. Just replace it. It's pretty easy to do. Uh, and now uh, that's it. Now you know how to change a clutch basket and get all these gears from one basket to the other. Pretty simple to do. So have at it.